Hi, I'm Mr. Levier, and I'm here with a scientist. Her name is Fiona, and she works with volcanoes. So how awesome is that? Hi, I'm Fiona. I'm a researcher at McGill University, and my specialty is the science of volcanoes, specifically volcanic gases. So those really bubbly things that come out of an eruption sometimes, or even before or after an eruption. Gases like water, steam, carbon dioxide, so those kinds of things. So one of the questions I have for you is, can you tell me, um, how did you get involved in this kind of stuff? So when I was little, I loved going camping and playing in the backyard and collecting rocks. and that sort of led me to the curiosity of the science behind rocks and of course I always wondered about seeing the world and how different rocks formed and eventually I discovered earth science. So the science of the earth includes not just studying rocks but also natural hazards, water, the atmosphere, all sorts of components, even planets. Um, and I was drawn to volcanoes um, when I was living in Iceland for my exchange abroad. Um, which, as you may know, is the land of ice and fire. So there's tons of volcanoes there. Um, and I actually got to climb my first volcano and I fell in love with hiking. So that's what drew me to studying volcanoes in the end. My next question for you is, uh, why is this kind of geology important? Why is it important to learn about volcanoes? Yeah, so this is important science um, nowadays especially, but always. Um, because of the communities living in these hazardous areas, when there's eruptions, it can really impact the local families, communities, agriculture, they can be deadly. Actually, today is the 43rd anniversary of the Mount St. Helens eruption, which um, was an explosive eruption where the side of the volcano actually erupted, we call that laterally. And there were people hiking and camping and looking uh, and researching in the area, so we actually had a, a few fatalities from that. So what the reason for us studying the volcanoes is to protect the communities living there, which will only become ever and ever more important as uh, the communities have to live closer to volcanoes because of climate change. We have more and more people living on these potentially dangerous but nonetheless valuable lands. You have some samples there. I'd like to take a little peek at some of them here. Yeah, what have got? so um, this is a little jar of some fresh scoria or um, pieces of lava from a volcano in Italy that I was studying called Stromboli. So these little pieces show you just by how rough they are that there are little holes inside left behind by the gases, so bubbles, just like when you open a bottle of sparkling water, bubbles inside of a magma chamber uh, want to escape, sometimes explosively, sometimes less so, but they'll leave behind holes in the rocks because now the gases are gone and we're left with these little tiny holes called um, vesicles inside the rocks. So this is really important to me and what I study because I want to know if the gases are escaping in an explosive way, which actually calls, uh, it's called fragmentation, it rips open the rocks, or if the gases are going to escape easily, and in that way it would flow more like honey or something out of uh, a volcano in Hawaii, like Kilauea, for example, versus those more explosive volcanoes like Mount St. Helens or some of the other ones. Interesting. And what else do we have? Uh, we also have obsidian, which is a, a favorite with everyone. So this is volcanic glass. It's very sharp. It would cut you. You have to be careful when sampling this. So it's actually pure silica, which is a very, very common element in the Earth's crust. But here it's in the form of glass because the rock cooled so quickly, that lava cooled so quickly, there was no time for the usual crystals to form. So it's called microcrystalline. It means we cannot see the crystals with the naked eye but it is just pure silica, which the most common mineral we know made of silica is, is quartz. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And you have some roundish ones. Yeah, so this is um, from Mount Etna in Italy. Um, I call it my lava bomb. It's less dynamically shaped as some lava bombs, but it, it did roll. And so you can see that it's, um, it's rounded because it's sort of like 
a projectile falling out of a volcano as it landed and cooled and rolled. The bubbles you can see left holes on the outside, but it is actually quite heavy. We call that wow. dense. May I, may I feel that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it is heavy. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. A lava bomb. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And finally, um, just another piece of a, a scoria, but this one, if you look closely, has little white pieces as well as the holes. And those are different crystals um, of different minerals and different features inside of it. So you can get a whole variety of rocks depending on the volcano, the eruption, where you sample it, everything from volcanic glass to uh, volcanic bombs to scoria and even more interesting ones that um, we could go on talking about all day. Wow. Well, my last question to you is, uh, where do you uh, see yourself uh, going from here? Uh, well, I was really lucky in the last 10 years that I've been studying volcanoes that I've visited, I think, over 35 volcanoes, and I've traveled to many, close to a dozen countries traveling and doing research. I spend my days now in the lab doing chemical experiments on those rocks or gases or even trees that we brought back from volcanic areas. But I also spend a lot of time on the computer analyzing the data. Um, and the third thing I do mostly now is communication about our results, so writing and presenting what we found. So I'd like to go into that domain more and, you know, get to share with the world what we've been able to study. Well, I want to thank you very much, Fiona, for doing this interview with us. This is awesome. My pleasure. Thank you. Wasn't that great, guys and girls? I think that was really interesting. Uh, so you never know what we're going to discover next.